Hi everybody, so we're going to start talking about chapter one. This has a mix of the stuff that we talked about when we were talking about word problems with some stuff that you should know from your Algebra 1 class, okay? So if you feel like we're focusing a lot on the word problems, we are, and that's because the more computational aspect of things should be review for you, and I hope that you're already comfortable with it. Okay, so let's jump right into some examples, okay? So this example says, on October 31st, Betty and Paul filled their 250-gallon fuel oil tank, okay? Beginning in November, they used 15 gallons of fuel oil per week. We're going to let W be the number of weeks and F of W be the amount of fuel left, okay? So you can see that we are using function notation here, and we're going to continue to use function notation throughout this chapter and the other chapters, so we'll get a chance to practice with that and really get comfortable with it. Okay, so the first part of this question is just to fill out this table. You can see they've given some values for W, and you're going to fill out some values for F of W. Okay, usually pretty, students are pretty confident about doing this, so I'd ask you to pause the video now and fill this out. Okay, so you can check your answers with me. If it has been zero weeks, right, meaning no time has passed, the fuel oil tank is still full, so they have 250 gallons. Okay, after one week, they've used 15 gallons. Okay, after four weeks, they've used 60 gallons. Okay, after 10 weeks, they've used 150 gallons, right, which would leave them with 100. And after 16 weeks, they've used 240 gallons, which would leave them with 10. Okay, all right. If you're having trouble getting these numbers, let me know. We can work on that. But like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on that because students usually feel pretty comfortable with it. Okay. So for part B, it says write an equation for F as a function of W. Okay. So here's a signal phrase. Okay. Before we were using in terms of. Okay. And that was telling us what the input and output variables were. And now we're going to switch to using the phrase as a function of. Okay, now this still really gives the same idea. It tells you that the thing before that, or the F, is the output variable, and the thing coming after that, or the W, is the input variable. Okay, the only other thing that this adds is that we are meant to use function notation. Okay, so we're writing an equation for F. So we're going to write f of w equals, okay? And then our right side should involve only numbers and our input variable w, okay? So at this time, we want to think about what we did in part a to get these numbers here, okay? So if you think about something like 4, right, what would you do with this number to get your answer 190, okay? Now you take that number four and you'd multiply it by 15, right? So we're gonna take our number W and we're gonna multiply it by 15 and that will tell us how much fuel oil they've used, okay? Then to get what's left over, you would subtract this number from 250, okay? So we're gonna use the same process that you use to get these correct answers in the table and we're just gonna write that symbolically. Take the number, multiply it by 15, and then you're going to subtract your answer from 250. Okay, this is a trick that's good for students who have an intuitive sense of how to do these numerical problems but struggle with writing down the equation. Okay, just really think through your process of what did I do to get those numbers and then you can just replicate that. Okay, all right, so let's look at part C. It says Graph using three of your points, okay? So we're gonna pick three points from the table, okay? And then we're gonna make a graph using those three points. So I'm gonna pick um, this point here, this point here, and this point here, okay? So we're gonna graph them on some graph paper here. Okay, and one thing I want to emphasize, because maybe you haven't seen too much of this during your Algebra 1 class, is that when you are graphing this, you need to pick a scale so that all of your points will fit on your graph. 
Okay. Now, because we're not going to have any negative time, we don't really need to show the negative part of the x-axis, right? Remember, your input variable is going to go on the x-axis. Your output variable is going to go on the y-axis, okay? And because they also can't have negative fuel oil, we don't really need to show the negative y-axis either, okay? So for my three points, which were 0, uh, which ones did I pick? 0, 250, 4, uh, 190, and 10, 100. Okay, so for these three points, I want to make sure that everything is going to fit on here. Okay, so I can see that there's certainly space for more than 10 here, so I'm just going to go by ones here. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10. Okay, plenty of room. Okay, and then here I want this to go all the way up to 250. So 1, 2, 3, 4, Okay, so I'm going to take the largest value, which is 250, and I'm going to divide it by the number of lines I have, which is 15. Okay, and you can see that you would get something that's a little bigger than 16. Okay, so that means that you have to go by something that is bigger than 16 on your scaling. Okay, now if you go by like 17, for example, you're going to get a lot of uneven numbers here, and our numbers are pretty even. So I'm going to go by 20s. So this would be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 40, 60, 80, 200, 40, 60, 80, 300. Okay. All right, so you can see that certainly our biggest value of 250 is going to fit on this axis, okay, and we've picked a scale that's going to give us nice even breaks by 20s. Okay, so now I'm going to graph my three points, 0, 250, okay, 20, 40, so that would be right here, halfway, okay. Then 4, 190, 4, 190, okay, and then 10, 100, okay. You can see that all three of my dots are lined up, all three of my points, right, are lined up in a line, and I'm going to go ahead and connect them with a line like that. All right, so that's part C, graphing using the points that we had from our table, okay? Now we're gonna answer part D, how much did it decrease, how much did the oil decrease from week four to week 10? So we can actually answer this with our table as well, right? So from week four to week 10, it's going from 190 to 100. So we would say it decreases by 90 gallons. Okay, and then the second part of this says illustrate that on your graph. Okay, so we actually chose to graph for week four and week 10. Okay, so remember the amount of fuel oil is the y-axis, so we're illustrating the change from this point to this one in terms of y. Okay, so we can see that it's going to go down Right from here to here, it's decreasing this much. Okay, so this is how I would illustrate that on my graph. Right, you can see the decrease in y from this point to this point. Okay, all right. Let's look at another example. A real estate agent gets a base salary of $10,000 per year and 3% of her total sales for the year. Okay. Let X be her sales for the year and I of X be her income. Okay, so again, this is showing us that X is going to be our input value, right? And I of X is going to be our output value. Okay, the first part, part A, says fill in the table. Okay, so here's my table. Again, they've given you some input values and you're supposed to fill in the output values. So go ahead and pause the video now and fill these out for yourself. Okay, all right. 
So let's check on what answers you should get. Okay, so the first thing I would do here is take 3% of this. Okay, so you would do 0 0.03 times 200,000. I'd get 6,000, and then I'm going to add that to my base salary, which is 10. That would give me 16,000. Okay, so then I'm going to do the same thing for all of these. Find 3% and then add it to that base value. So here I'm going to get 25,000. Here I'm going to get 34,000. Okay, and then here I'm going to get 46,000. Okay. All right. So now we're going to move on to the part that's more difficult, and we're going to write the equation for i as a function of x. Okay, so here again is that signal phrase. Okay, so we're going to say i of x equals, because we're writing an equation for i, right, so i equals, and then on our right side, we're going to use only numerical values and the input value x, okay? So again, we're going to think back to what we did with these numbers. So the first thing we did was take 3%, so we did 0 0.03 times that number, okay? And then we added that to our base salary, which was 10,000. Okay, so again, we're just mirroring the process that gave us these numbers, but we're writing that symbolically. Okay. Let's look at part C, graph using the table. Okay, so again, we're going to pick some points from the graph. I'm just going to pick the first three here. Okay, and we're going to graph using those three points. Okay. So again, those points were 200,000, 16,000, um, the second point was 500,000, 25,000, and the last point was 800,000, 34,000. Okay, so we're going to, again, she can't have negative income, right? And she also can't sell negative dollar amounts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is decide how to scale the x-axis. Okay, so it has to go all the way up to 800,000. So, for example, if I went by ones, that wouldn't really work because I'd need 800,000 lines. Okay, but it looks like these are all even hundred thousands, like 200,000, 500,000, 800,000. So I'm just going to go by 100,000. So this will be 100,000, 2, 3, 4, 500,000, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Now, again, I think the y-axis is a little bit more complicated, okay? So we want this to go all the way up to 34,000. So um, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so we're going to take 34,000, and we're going to divide it by 16. Okay, and you'll see that we get a little bit more than 2,000. Okay, so that means we have to pick something bigger than 2,000 to go here. Okay, so maybe we'll go with 3,000. Okay, 6, 9, 12, 15,000. Okay, 18, 21, 24,000. 27, 30,000, 33, 36, 39,000. Okay. All right. So now we're going to mark each of our points. So 200,000, 16,000. So we'll go to 200,000 and then 16,000. 
okay, 500,000, 25,000, okay, and then 800,000, 34,000. Again, you can see that these all line up in a nice line. Okay, so we're going to connect them with a line. Okay, all right, so that's part C, graph using the table. We're going to find I of 350,000 and say what it means. Okay, now there's two ways to do this. Okay, the first way is to estimate from the graph. Okay, so we're going to look at our graph, okay, and we're going to go to the input of 350,000, okay, and then we're going to estimate the output. So we're going to look up here, okay, it looks like we would be here at this point, which would be right at 21,000, okay. All right. The other way is to do it algebraically. Okay. All right, and that would use our equation. So remember our equation was I of X equals 0.03X plus 10,000. Okay, and then we would just plug in 350,000 for X. Okay. Remember, we're going to show ourselves plugging things in. Okay, and then I'm going to use my calculator to get an answer. Okay, so you should get 20,500. Okay, now you can see that these are a little bit different and the reason is because when you're looking at the graph, you can't tell exactly what value you're getting and that's why I said estimate from the graph. Because of that, the algebraic method is better, okay? And in general, when you're asked this question, if you have an equation, then you should use the algebraic method to get a more exact answer. Okay, so that answers find I of 350,000. Now, what does it mean? When you're answering this, make sure that you're answering both parts, okay? What does the input value mean? What does the output value mean, okay? So if, remember the input value is how much she sells, okay? So if she sells $350,000, okay? And the output value is her income. So her income, is 20,500, okay? So two parts, explain the $350,000 input, explain the output, okay? All right, last part, find all values of X so that I of X is 55,000, okay? And then we're gonna say, what does that mean, okay? So again, we're gonna use the algebraic method because it's more precise. So let's look at our equation. It was I of X equals 0.03 X plus 10,000. Okay. And now we're plugging in I of X is 55,000. So we plug that in here. Okay, and we're gonna isolate X. So I'm gonna subtract 10,000 from both sides. And I'm gonna divide both sides by 0 0.03. So I should get this equals x, okay? So there's my answer, okay? And again, we're gonna answer what does it mean, okay? So this is i of x, so remember that's the income, okay? So we would say her income 
is 55,000 if, okay? And then what does the X value stand for? Remember, that's how much real estate she sells, okay? So if she sells $1,500,000 worth, okay? All right. I hope that these couple of examples make sense. If you're having trouble with the review aspect of this, let me know. And otherwise, I'll see you guys.